Hi class, in this video I want to discuss how to use Taylor series representations to find solutions of ordinary differential equations. So let's consider a simple ordinary differential equation, this one here. The second derivative of y with respect to x is equal to y. We already know how to solve a, a problem like this, a second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients, and if you uh, look at the characteristic equation, you'll easily see the solution is the form some constant times e to the plus x plus another constant times e to the minus x. Often, however, the uh, equation that we have may not be one that we can just solve by inspection like this. It might be that the coefficients of the equation actually involve the function uh, fu uh, powers of x or some function of x. So we don't in general know uh, how to write down or how to guess the solution in closed form, which is what we did to get this solution. So can we think of something more general? Well, we could just try plugging in a Taylor series form of the solution y of the form y equals sum over n, a, a n x to the n. There are assumptions in this. We're assuming the solution is very smooth at x equals 0. In fact, we know these coefficients are related to the derivatives of the solution at the origin. Uh, at higher and higher derivatives. So we're essentially assuming that all derivatives exist, so the solution is really very smooth. We're also assuming that this uh, series has some non-zero radius of convergence. But modulo those, those assumptions, this is the most general form any kind of uh, solution could have. So we could just plug this solution into the equation. So we get d squared by dx squared of the series equals the series on the right-hand side. That's just plugging it into here. Now. We're going to assume that we can simply take these derivatives and move them inside the sum. That is actually an exchange of limits. There's an, a limit involved in defining the sum. There's limits involved in defining the derivatives. And uh, moving the derivatives inside the sum involves exchanging those two limits. In general, that's, that's only true if this uh, convergence of this series is sufficiently fast, if it's uniformly convergent, technically speaking. We're just going to assume that, and we'll check it afterwards. If, if, the, if this derives a solution, then we, we expect that that was a reasonable assumption. Taking two derivatives, if we do this term by term, all it does is take x to the n and change it to n times n minus 1 times the coefficient that you had. And so you have this series on the left-hand side equals this series on the right-hand side. Note that this series has the, has the property that when n equals 0 or n equals 1 on the left-hand side, uh, the terms vanish. So we can shift. We can let n equal m plus 2 and, then, and let m go from 0 to infinity. That's essentially ignoring the first two terms in the expansion and shifting the index by, by 2. If we rewrite the left-hand side, then the left-hand side becomes the sum m going from 0 to infinity m plus 2 times m plus 1 a m plus 2 x to the m equals the right-hand side sum n going from 0 to infinity a n x to the n. Now, for this infinite series to equal this infinite series, for all values of x, or at least values of x sufficiently close to the origin, then it must be that term by term, the coefficients of the same powers of x must uh, equal one another on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So let's concentrate on a term that goes like x to the capital N, and we're going to equate the coefficient of x to the capital N on the left-hand side to the coefficient of x to the N on the right-hand side. That equation becomes this equation here, capital N plus 2 times capital N plus 1, AN plus 2 equals AN plus 1. That's imposing equality of the coefficients of the power x to the capital N. This gives us a relationship between the different terms in our Taylor expansion. A sub n plus 2 is equal to A sub n over n plus 2 times n plus 1. This is known as a two-step recursion relation. If we know A0, we know A2, A4, A6, A8. If we know A1, we know A3, A5, A7, etc. So in fact, the lowest two terms, A0, the first constant term in the Taylor expansion, and A1, the coefficient of x, are in fact arbitrary. They're not determined by uh, imposing the differential equation. However, once A0 is given, A2 is just A0 over 2 times 1, or A0 over 2 factorial. A4 is A2 over 4 times 3, or A0 over 4 factorial. Similarly, a3 can be written as a1 over 3 factorial, and a5 as a1 over 5 factorial, and the pattern continues on, uh, so on and so forth. That's if you want the, so the solution of this two-step recursion relation. 
If we plug that back into our series, we see that yx can be written as a0 times a sum, 1 plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial plus etc. This is very much like the Taylor series for the cosine, except that the signs don't alternate. In fact, it's the Taylor series for the hyperbolic cosine of x, cosh x. Similarly, a1 is x plus x cubed over 3 factorial x to the 5 over 5 factorial etc. Very much like the uh, Taylor series for the sine, except that the uh, the signs of the terms SIGN signs don't alternate. So this is actually the Taylor series for the cinch function, the hyperbolic sine. The hyperbolic cosine is just e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2. The hyperbolic sine is e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2. So we can rewrite these as two coefficients, a0 plus a1 over 2 times e to the x, a0 minus a1 over 2 e to the minus x. So that just um, recovers what we knew to be the solution. We knew the solution was a combination of e to the x and e to the minus x. In general, we won't be able to sum these series and recognize them as elementary functions that we are already familiar with and write them down in terms of these elementary functions, but the Taylor series representation still gives us a way to find the solution of an arbitrary differential equation as long as we know that it is smooth near the point we're expanding around, in this case, around x equals 0. When we talk about Frobenius series, we're going to generalize this somewhat, and we're going to see that we can also think of slightly more general solutions where the functions aren't, in fact, completely smooth around the point that we expand.